I had a video sent to me uh, by a fellow YouTuber. I can't remember the name of his channel. It's like Chris Hits 94 or something like that. I'll put it in the description box. Uh, he had a question about how to wire up, uh, you know, his Outback uh, grid tie inverter. This is the GT FX 2524, and uh, I'll go into that right now. So uh, probably the easiest way is to start from the beginning, where it starts and where it ends up. So the connection going into the inverter or the ACN is this 30 amp breaker. Uh, which goes to number 8 wire because the run is so long and uh, I'll show you where it goes from there and, and it's a 120 volt input so it's a single pole breaker you just have a hot and then your neutrals and your grounds are tied to the bus bars then it comes over here uh, next to where the utilities input the house to a, uh, a disconnect so that it, uh, the grid tie can be disconnected even though it's got island protection and there's it's not an issue with feedback uh, the disconnect is still required. Here it is anyway. I'm not positive about National Electric Code, I believe it is. And then also labeling that your house has a dual power source. So coming from that disconnect, it comes to this plug here. And that's a 30 amp twist lock plug. And uh, I found that to be one of the easiest ways to do it. Then it goes down and uh, this cable here is called CSA type SO cable. Uh, it's kind of like what you see laying on the floors and industrial cable and it's 10-3 and then basically it just goes to the uh, AC neutral in, AC hot in and uh, the chassis ground. Now from here I'll show you how I have it wired and then uh, I'll recommend how you should wire it because uh, my system's a little goofy and uh, there's kind of some backup so I'll kind of go into that. So then you have your uh, AC hot out, AC neutral out and this is going to go to your sub panel with your designated load such as your refrigerators, uh, lights, TV, whatever you choose to uh, battery back up in the event of a power outage. So it comes out of the inverter here in this MC cable and this is 10-2 uh, with a ground. It comes down here, this is where it gets goofy. It comes to this 30 amp uh, automatic transfer switch. Haven't been in there in a while. And what it's doing, it's holding the contactor shut so if the uh, the inverter were to go out or the power would be interrupted from the inverter for any, any reason at all. This cable coming down here goes to this uh, transfer switch and all this is a double throw switch. I'll show you a big version of it but uh, this one happens to be automatic. So if the inverter goes out then it switches over to the grid uh, you know as far as feeding the designated loads and, and uh, if there was no grid then you just fire up the generator. And it goes through this meter base it goes to my designated circuit. So uh, let me show you what a uh, transfer switch is and, and what they do. So this transfer switch is directly above uh, my diesel generator, whole house generator. And um, basically what they do, um, you, have your, uh, you have your line in the center here. I'm sorry, you load. This is actually the house itself. This goes to the main panel of the house. Your line coming in, this is your utilities. And then... Uh, this is the generator itself, uh, these pieces of cable here. And uh, all they really do is they allow you not to be able to turn on two circuits at once. You can either run it off the uh, utility, which it's on now, that's why the lever's up, or you can pull it to the down position and switch to the generator. So basically that's explaining a transfer switch, but uh, or a double throw switch. But uh, we're not going to be too concerned with that. We'll go into uh, how I think most people would want to wire up one of their inverters. Now, obviously, you can use the uh, you can use the Flexware system, which you know that's all wired up for you, and you just hook it up. That's what's in the diagrams that come with these things. Um, the way I would do it, I'd do it just like this: have my 30 amp plug that feeds the inverter, which also is where the grid tie feeds back through. It actually pushes against the circuit that it's plugged into, and on the output of the inverter, that MC cable there, I'd go ahead and run that out of the inverter and set another twist, uh, twist lock box exactly like that one and in the event that your inverter were to fail all you'd have to do would uh, be to uh, unplug which would be coming directly from your panel would be a cable just like this one and you just plug it in there and then bypass your inverter uh, I think that makes sense alright so I drew you a little map just in case that, little, that last part was a little confusing um, you get your grid, comes to a 30 amp twist lock plug, which is uh, all the inverter can do anyway. Goes through the inverter, comes out of the inverter, twist lock plug, 
you got your twist lock that comes out of your panel. This can come directly out of your panel. It's legal, um, you know, especially with that kind of cable. Um, and if you were to have a problem with the inverter, instead of having a double throw switch or something like that, you just unplug the inverter, take your wire coming from your panel, plug it into the grid. It'd be doing the same thing. Now, one thing to remember is uh, these inverters here, um, if they don't have a battery bank connected to them, they won't work at all. They won't pass power through them. Um, they actually become useless. They don't do anything. So, if, you know, if I were to turn that switch off right there, um, the inverter would just shut down. It would shut down the power going out. Uh, it wouldn't do anything with the power coming in. So that's kind of something to remember too. And I think that's why they, you know, kind of want you to do a little bypass system in case there's some problems. Now the DC connections are very easy. You just uh, got 24 volts. You got a positive and a negative. Underneath that cover, there's some big lugs that you. Uh, uh, bolt them on to and then you have a big chassis ground that's that big green wire and uh, the other little green wire coming out of there is uh, going to the mate I think yeah it goes over to the mate which uh, gives you the information on the inverter so I think uh, using the cords um, you know is a good way to go it's really good wire um, the twist lock plugs and the receptacles they're uh, they're fairly pricey but it's still probably a lot cheaper than using that flexware system or whatever that thing's called and, uh, you know, the stuff I do might be a little bit extraneous, but, uh, you know, the way I look at it, if the power goes out, or I'm sorry, if the inverter quits for any reason, then this thing will automatically transfer over to the grid and, and just go right by the inverter. So that's kind of the way I did that. And then, uh, just uh, a word uh, word to the wise, um, if you're planning on linking one of these up to a generator at all, they kind of tell you not to do it. Um, I actually do it. Um, I can run my generator and have this thing charge up my battery bank, but uh, the problem is you got to have some really clean power to do it because these things will reject it in a second, and then they'll click back over, and then they'll say, yeah, I'll go check it out again, and then they'll click the other way. I mean, and it surely can't be good for the inverter. And also, when you're running your generator, if you were on the off-grid with one of these inverters, the grid tie is actually going to push against your generator, which is not a big deal. But um, it can get confusing for everything, so uh, that's just something to think about. They just don't recommend doing generators on these at all, but I do it because I'm an idiot. Well, I hope that wasn't too confusing, and uh, I do like the idea of plugs. Um, I think it's great because in that last, uh, when my house got struck by lightning, I happened to have been here, and I literally unplugged this thing. And I can't say whether it would have been affected or not. I have no idea. But it absolutely did take out both of those charge controllers. Um, in fact, they still smell bad. Uh, I'm probably going to try to fix them, but we'll see. Anyway, hope that was helpful. You guys have a good one, and we'll see you next time.